Now, South Africa's ruling African National Congress has welcomed a report by a team of directors general into an illegal landing of a private aircraft at a restricted military installation days after the landing at the Vatakloof military base in Pretoria with more than 200 guests for the Gupta family. It was reported that the plane had not received any executive authority to land at the base. Justice Minister uh, Hadebe identified norm dropping as one of the key contributors towards the unauthorized landing of the plane. South Africa <coughs> report on the landing of the Jet Airways plane in Waterkloof military base um, was discussed uh, by the NEC. The NEC agreed to wait for the report of DGs uh, as commissioned by the ministers in the security cluster. And the report has now been finalized and made public. The NC welcomes the outcome of the investigation. Uh, we appreciate the details contained in the report and clarity given. You must remember, when we issued our first statement, one of the things we asked for was that, please uh, investigate the matter, give us the report, and then we'll take it from there. We are quite satisfied that uh, the ministers uh, who are relevant to the issue have moved with the necessary speed and released the report within the seven days, they, the working days they committed themselves to. The NC welcomes the, the outcome and we appreciate details contained and clarity given. It provides the basic information on what happened. This will help the parliamentary debate on Wednesday. We are confident that the relevant ministers will take the process to its logical conclusion so that the incident does not repeat itself. ANC Secretary General Gwene Mandashin asked whether the reporters, the media, has come to call the investigation is a case for powerful business people getting away with crime. Uh, Mandashin referred to a recent case in which a business person was acquitted following accusation of stealing from the poor and their families. It is a major issue in society. One example, leave this one. Take the question of the Brown case. That tells you the impact of the effect of money on society. Where you take the money and the pensions of uh, many people and you get 150 rand for a thousand rand. Uh, for God's sake, that tells you that it is creating a picture that <coughs> money can buy anything. And it's a challenge that we must deal with as a society because it's a terrible trend in society that people with money can buy anything and can buy anybody. Now, at the same briefing, Mantashe also revealed that the ruling party's executive had also discussed ongoing labor unrest in South Africa's mines. At Lonmin, members of the Association of Mine Workers and Construction Union, which represents the most miners at the company, held a two-day strike demanding the closure of a smaller organization's office at the Marikana operation. Anglo-American Platinum employees have also threatened to strike over its proposal to cut as many six, as, as 6,000 jobs as part of a plan to return to profitability. The rivalry of the unions in the Rustenburg area and in the mining industry and anywhere else, we have a principle uh, on that matter. We don't think employers should be biased in favor of the NUM against AMCO. That's not what we're saying. What we are saying is that in every area where there are more than one unions in a company, all of them must play according to rules. That's all according to rules. Don't point a gun at, at, at Texas and force him to sign a membership form. Don't put an ASEKA and say to Jackson, if you don't sign a membership form, we'll stab you. Recruit, sell your ideas, sell your services, service your membership, compete, be out-organized. That's our position there. It's not a question of whether there is rivalry, therefore we hate AMCO. No, it's not our business. They have a right to exist, right to form and organize unions is a right of every South African.